All right, so welcome to our second interview here at the JFocus conference. Um, I'm joined here by Roberto Cordes. Hi. Welcome. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for having me here. And we're going to chat a little bit about um, batch processing in Java EE7. Yes. So, so how's your conference experience been so far? Well, it's been pretty good. I'm here since yesterday, and I hope people are enjoying it as much as I do. Uh, we're still in the beginning. We have uh, the rest of the day and a full day tomorrow, but it's going pretty good so far. What about you, Steve? Yeah, so far so good. I did the VM Tech Summit yesterday. That was a lot of fun. Awesome. Got to I walk mean, around in slushy snow, which for, for people who live in Stockholm, it's probably not that exciting, but <laughs> in California, we don't really get snow. Yeah, we don't <laughs> have much snow in Portugal either. But yeah, so this is like a treat. Like yeah. a, a white Christmas. Yeah, and it was well, funny because a white February. Uh, like the last couple of days, there was no snow here, and since the conference started, it's been snowing like crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's great weather. So um, we're enjoying the, the beautiful indoor weather here at yeah. JFocus. No snow for us. But I'm going to switch to your computer, and then you can actually show me some of the stuff that you've been working on. So tell me, tell me a little bit about this application which we're looking at. Yeah, let me just start by giving like a bit of introductory stuff. Oh, uh, and I'll, I'll also no, yeah. Yeah, share yeah. with the folks in the audience okay. here. How, how's that? A little bit better? You know that uh, batch processing is uh, something very boring. We have to admit that, right? It's not as exciting as the cloud stuff or Java 8 lambdas and all that stuff. But the real thing is uh, we all need batch processing in our uh, enterprise applications, right? Everyone's yeah. done it in one point or another. You, you don't have, like you 10, don't have a good years. user interface without a strong backend. Yeah. And, well, it's a bit boring, but still, I try to make it the less boring to uh, know about it and to understand it a little bit. So, for the folks that probably are not aware of, um, Java E7 introduced a new spec. Uh, that's JSR 352. That means it's uh, batch processing for Java applications. And that brought uh, Java processing for the Java E spec, which is something that we were missing for a long time. And me as a consultant and as a freelance, I've been working with a lot of companies in the, my development career. And you know that my, my real pain was every time I went to this company and looked uh, into their applications, they, everyone they had their own. They used a different batch yeah. processing, open everyone, source framework, everyone or rolled their, their own, own framework. Exactly. So it's like yeah. a pain to like go there and see what's going on. And I really think that's really a nice step forward to have this spec in the Java E because uh, now you can cover a lot of cases that usually people need to do when they're working on the enterprise, and hopefully try to uninformize un things a little better, and at least cool. save us the pain point of trying to understand what's going on. on so, those. so have you, been, have you doing, been doing some consulting at Blizzard Entertainment? Well, not not <laughs> not on entertainment. I'm assuming this is this is World of Warcraft. Yeah, this is World of Warcraft. I I, I probably should have put some logos here, but to make it like a bit more interesting, I mean, most of us that work on the enterprise are always like doing some really boring stuff with batch, right? Like, let's process these financial transactions. Let's yeah. try to yeah. like do this That's report. That's super boring. That's really really boring. So, as probably you imagine, I'm an addicted World of Warcraft player. I don't know if anyone's here playing World of Warcraft. I know that a lot of Swedish people are play gonna, it. Are you going to share your online handle so we can go beat you up? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, for people that don't know the game, um, there is something in the game called the Action House. So, an Action House is something where you can just put items for sale that you get on the game. And you can buy items as well. So it works like a, an eBay, actually, in game. Yeah. Uh, something that World of Warcraft also has is that they have like a REST API that you can just query their servers and uh, get all the information from there. So now to give you like just a few numbers, World of Warcraft uh, has around 10 million players around the world, uh, around 500 servers uh, between Europe and uh, the US. 
and they usually trade around 70k uh, items an hour. Wow. So if you do the math, it's around 30 million items uh, that goes all around the servers in each hour. So uh, I think that's a perfect sample so this, for, for batch. This is high volume trading yeah, on video high, games. Yeah, high volume trading in games. I mean, you can do it in a lot of other technologies, but I just pick up. Do you, do you get good batch. arbitrage by doing very high volume trading on armor and yeah. swords? I mean, I had one of is the that, Is that how you finance your um, consultancy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, I, I probably could sell some of the gold I made, but uh, probably that's not going to make me much rich. But anyway, I probably like end game, I have like 1 million gold or something. Oh, wow. So, OK, you're, you're buying dinner tonight. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I've done this just to go to the World of Warcraft servers, download the action house data, and then try to see fluctuations on the prices on cool. the items. Uh, and then I built this application where I can see just that. So I'm actually going to try to show a little bit of code first. And then I'm going to show like the, re the end result. It's not a big deal, actually. So let me put this on presentation mode so people can actually see it a li little bit better. Yeah, uh, I think it can it's, be it's, even it's good. bigger, but yeah, that's good. Uh, anyway, so when we're doing batch stuff, we can pretty much do, oh, sorry. Let me just put this on take out power saver mode, OK? Um, so we pretty much start with uh, something called a batch XML uh, file. Yeah, so we still have XML on batch, which it's pr probably a bit boring, but uh, it's not, not a big of a deal. And th this XML file, we can just like program like a workflow uh, of things that we want to do with, uh, with the batch stuff. Yeah. Uh, so batch has different elements that we can use. Uh, so we can process stuff saying like a batchlet, and batchlet is just like a, a task. And the task, we just have like an interface that we implement and do some code there. Or we can implement something called uh, chunk processing, which is pretty much like a database ETL process. So extract, transform, and load. Uh, chunk is something like read uh, data, process data, and then write the data. So actually, what I'm doing here on this uh, XML uh, file is I'm setting up uh, my batch process. And what I'm doing here is that I'm going to connect to all the realms that are going on Europe and on uh, US. And something that batch also allows you to do is allow you to partition stuff. So you can pretty much run stuff in parallel, which cool. is pretty awesome. And what I'm doing here is I'm connecting since the endpoints to uh, get the data are different for US and for mm -hmm. Europe. I have like two partitions, of course, one for Europe and another for, for US. And then I have here the realm uh, status and the button of status to see which realms are active or not and then load the data from there. So basically what I have here is just like a batchlet which is going to get this data here so I can actually navigate to it like this. And this is actually just like a standard Java E application with batch. So as you can see here, you're going to recognize stuff from CDI and from JPA. Yeah. And Lots of annotations. Yeah. So only, only what you have here from batch is this batch property, mm -hmm. which is like I'm injecting uh, the value that I just added here on the partitioning. Um, and anyway, the batchlet just has this process uh, method. And as you can see, I'm just like using the also new Jack SRS client on Java E7 yeah. uh, to connect to the um, to the World of Warcraft server and then Very get nice. some data from there. Actually, this is actually I love this sample because it's using a lot of new stuff from new Java E7. Java E7 API so, is all in one single. Yeah, so it's using the batch stuff, of course, it's the yeah. main one, using the client Jack SRS stuff, yeah. also using. JSON P processing because um, the files that you get from the World of Warcraft servers are JSON files. Cool. Uh, so I also use the JSON P uh, specification and uh, API to download and process the data. 
Anyway, this is like a very simple uh, class. Just process the, the REST server and do something. Now, going to uh, a little bit more of detail, I'm going to look into um, this other XML. Mm -hmm. So this other XML, what it's going to do is it's going to download a JSON file, which has all the auction house data. And I can show you like a real sample here as well. So probably not here. This is the data straight off the Blizzard servers? Exactly. So I should have a sample here. So this is like a, a really small sample yeah. that I use but to test. But uh, that's the regular format for the yeah, file. Yeah, the regular format. So you hear here is like the real name, which is the server which you connect to play. And then you have auctions. And then you have like the auction ID, the item ID. The owner, it's the, yeah, that, the guy that's selling the item. That item, it's just a number, so I can't tell yeah. what it is. But I think that's out of your price range. That's over a million. That's no, no, a this, this, million is, dollar. this is uh, the auction item. And this is actually bid and buyout is actually the price of the, of the item. Yeah, uh, but so you said you're a millionaire. Yeah, this is in copper. So copper, this is like. Uh, okay. uh, 3.8. This is 3.8 gold. So that's this cheap. Is not not my, not much gold. Um, anyway, now looking again to the code. So this process job is gonna download the data, and this is actually also using um, Java 8 parallel streams, because. Since I'm connecting to 500 servers at the same time mm -hmm. and doing REST regrets uh, to the 500 servers, I just use like a parallel stream to iterate all the, the realms that I have and then nice. do all the REST requests as a parallel. So you've uh, even got a Java 8 lambdas. In yeah, the mix. so they should be around here somewhere. Uh, not probably not here. Uh, parallel. So here we go. There's an optional here. Uh, connect to the servers for this create connection. And just to have an idea, I think this is a very good sample where you can use parallel streams because w when I was using the regular uh, thing, connecting all the servers and all the data took me like three minutes. Yeah, now okay. using but parallel streams. Uh, you can do it much faster since yeah. you can do all of those connection things with so long timeouts in parallel. With parallel streams, it takes like 30 seconds. Yeah. So that's good. And, and you're I, probably gonna, jamming up your common pool in the process as yeah, well. Yeah, but <laughs> still, it's fun. It's fun that's a, a, a very good use case for parallel streams. Yeah. Uh, and I think they work very well with when you're doing REST requests. Uh, anyway, so let's get here in the process job again. So now. When I get one of these files with all the, the action uh, file data, what I have here is something called an item reader. Mm -hmm. And this item reader is just going to read items for the file, and then it's going to hand them to an item process. It's going to do something there. Okay. So this read item, what's going to do is using, as I told you before, the JSONP, a new uh, specification. It's going to parse that JSON file, and it's going to uh, translate one of those records to uh, a POJO. It's actually yeah. a, a JPA POJO. And it's going to persist it into a database, just a Postgre database, nothing really fancy. So as you can see here, just opening a connection, uh, disclosing connection, nothing much. Then read the item, parse whatever uh, information I have, fill the object, and we're done. Cool. Uh, now. Then we have something called the processor, which basically an item reader is going to read the item, it's going to hand it to a processor. And here I'm going to have the item again. I'm just going to set up some of the information that I need. Uh, so basically setting up the realm, setting up the auction file, which this data was processed, and nothing much. And this is just going to hand the resulting object to a writer. So this writer, what it's going to do is very simple, just going to write the items to a um, Is that going to a database. Out to a database yeah, persistence. That's the Postgre database, and we're done. So, this is only like handling the raw data. So, just yeah. translating the, what's on the JSON file to a database. 
And then I just have another uh, step on the process that's going to import the statistics. So import statistics, what it's going to do is this is going to read uh, the data from the database. And mm -hmm. it's going to aggregate and sum some of the stuff there. So uh, each item can have different sellers, can have different uh, values. So I'm going to just sum all these values to have averages and all total counts and see how many items there are for sale, what's the average for sale, and some yeah. of that stuff. Nice. So as you can see here, I'm not using JPA anymore. Uh, I'm using plain JDBC just yep. because I want to have like um, a scrollable result set because this is so much data that I cannot just use JPA because JPA doesn't have a scrollable result set where I can just query the database for just one result at a time. And or if you use like a paginated query there, it's going to take like tremendous amount of time because this is only doing a query. And if you use a JPA, you're going to have multiple queries doing done there. Yeah. So I, I actually done the two approaches, and this and just this takes much faster. Yeah, this just takes wise. a few seconds, and on a JPA with uh, paginated results or doing like uh, one query at a time takes like half an hour. It's like totally yeah. crazy. Okay. So. This is actually something pretty good as well to understand, because when we're dealing with batch processing, sometimes we're very worried about the performance of our stuff. And I mean, I love JPA as a specification and as a, um, something to work with, but sometimes it's not the best approach to do stuff. For, for certain sort of applications. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is just reading items from a result set. Uh, and basically, actually, when the result set returns null, that means the there is no more elements to read, so then okay. we're done with the reading. And once again, we have another processor, which is going to fill now another object called auction, I'm, auction item statistics, which is going to have like the quantity that's for sale, what's the mean bid, what's the mean buyout. So uh, stuff like bid is, of course, bidding. Buyout, you can just buy the item right away without bidding and doing some math here as well. So very, very simple, I guess. And of course, we have a writer again, which is just going to pick up the item statistics and it's going to uh, persist the data as well. And here, I'm just using JPA as well. And you can see here, I'm also using uh, method references from Java very 8. Good. So <laughs> I guess, this, uh, as I say, this is a good example because it makes a lot of stuff, streams, uh, parallel streams, lambdas, a lot of stuff with Java E7. So yeah. uh, I enjoy it's a good it good use case it. for all the latest technologies. Uh, I, 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 I learned a lot in the process is the, when I was doing this. Is the code base open source or on GitHub yes, where folks can the code, access it? The code, the code is on GitHub. It's on my account. I'm going to give you the link right away. Actually, I, can, I think I can open it right away. So if you go to GitHub. Uh, let me sign in. And if you go to my account, so my account is Rod Cortez. Yeah. Let's uh, see you want you have, me do you to have the accessibility on to make it larger? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And you have some some my repository is called Woe Actions. Cool. And you can probably I can probably tweet this as well. So. Yeah, so afterwards, we'll I'll, send out a link I'll, to I'll the, it for folks afterwards. who want to. I mean, it's open. I, I think I already have a couple of contributors as well, just uh, providing some small fixes. So if you like to like contribute something, you're free to go. If you want to just have a look, you're free to go. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll try to answer as best as I can. Cool. I also have my own blog, where I also explain this in a much more detail. So. I think I have, yeah, the posts are actually here on the readme of the GitHub, so you can see them right away. Now, I also built like a very small interface for this. It's nothing fancy, but let's actually see it a little bit. First, so actually, I have to pick the realm where I want to search for items. So I actually play on this one. It's a Portuguese realm, of course. Yeah. And now I have to search for an item. I have to search for this ID here. So I'm going to put like 109, 119. Let's search it. 
And you can see, so the item that I'm searching here is called True Iron Whore. And we can see here that I have records since November 22. And there were like 13 gold on November, and it's been dropping since yeah. then. Yeah, so if you have all your money in iron. Yeah, it's probably not going to be a good no, idea. No, bad commodity to have your and money in. And now it's going to be yapping a little bit. And actually, I have here all the records that are building this graph over here. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot high quantity of the items there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to connect to the world servers and try to update this snapshot of data. Okay. And hopefully, let's see if this updates. With the current prices for, yeah, with the current prices. for iron. So I'm actually going to run a job here. Called file jobs. Probably not going to see much, but he's going to see a lot of log here. <laughs> yeah, so <that's> <laughs> <laughs> you can see here is a fork joins uh, log here, which is using the streams uh, parallel stuff to connect to all the servers and allow download all the data there. Cool. So actually, it's done now. It was very, very fast. Uh, and now I'm just going to do something called process job. And this is actually going to. Uh, pick up the file, uh, read all the JSON uh, okay. data that's there, put it on the database, and then extract the metrics. This takes a, a little longer, and I'm only doing this for my realm. So if I do this for everyone, it takes probably like half an hour to process everything. Wow. So it takes a long time on my machine, of course. Probably I need some cloud infrastructure to like do this very, very fast. <laughs> but let's see. Well, so I, I think to, to really um, put, implement your high volume trading system, yeah. you need servers that are nearby Blizzard's hosting yeah, center so you probably. can get the fastest um, yeah, yeah, transaction time possible. Uh, actually, I'm done. So if I go here, let's see. So last update, we have February 1st. So I've done it one of this morning at 9 AM. So let's do search again. I don't know if you notice that one yeah, it over dropped. there. It dropped uh, a little bit. Dropped a little bit. So we have one process at February 1st, 11.14. Actually, that's my time zone. So it's not the correct time zone for Sweden. And it dropped a little bit. So in the morning was 2.2 gold. Now it's 1.8. And so on. So this is pretty much uh, what it is. So if you're curious, it's actually using Angular. As, well, a, as, the user interface. as a user interface and using Google Graphs as well to draw this uh, graph over here. So if for some reason you want to search for another item, I don't have autocompletes for the item names yet, so I have to search them on the database from a website here. So yeah. for instance, go, I know a couple, so I know Iron Ghost, Ghost Iron Bar, for instance, and Ghost Iron Bar. Uh, Let's click over here. It has this ID. So I'm going to put this ID over here, going to search it. And now I have a price for Ghost Iron yeah, Bar. Yeah, so that, that looks like a, it's been trending downwards, but yeah. it's definitely up from November. Yeah, actually, you know that World of Warcraft, they launched a new expansion like in November. Oh. So the prices, they spiked up a bit. Because when a new the expansion comes up, a lot of people, a lot of people return to the game. Yeah. And after a few months, then people start <laughs> playing other things, and then prices go down a little bit. Um, but usually, it's funny because then when World of Warcraft launches a new patch, prices go up again. <laughs> and so you can pretty much control and see Basically what's going on. Basically, supply and demand in the video game world. Yeah. So it's it's pretty fun. Um, well, it's pretty much everything that I have to show you. Um, so I'm going to tweet the GitHub um, account. Also, if you're more interested, uh, me and a couple of other guys have a project called um, Java eSamples project. Okay, so this so, is smaller samples of the batch yeah. processing and not only the batch, but all RS. all other specs for yeah. Java E7. So for batch, uh, this is pretty much maintained by me on the batch stuff. 
Got it. So we have a lot of stuff. Everything's documented. So you're free to go if you want to contribute any more samples or if you find any other bug. Hey, Arun is there cheering for the Java samples. He's the one that uh, started this whole thing. Yeah, and you get to see Arun on stage tonight yeah. for the, um, the Forgotten Bytes. Yeah. And we have, we have uh, all the other specs for Java E, so JPA, JSF, JAXRS. So if you want to come here and start learning about new specs, or if you want just to have a sample of something you want to do and you don't want to do it, you can probably find it here. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a very good project. So a couple of, we have a lot of contributors at the moment. We have a lot of people looking into these projects, and it's working pretty well. Cool. All right, now that was a great tour through batch processing and JAXRS and even some of the new Lambdas and Java E stuff. Okay. And thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Steve. At JFocus. Okay. So our next interview is going to be Zach Shelby, um, Central European time. That is at 1.50. So join us at the next break here at JFocus. And um, as we mentioned, there's also going to be a great evening party here. So we're going to have lots of classic relics and great speakers here on stage awesome. around 6.30 p.m. tonight. So thank you very much. Thank it you was so a much, pleasure. Steve. It was a pleasure.